Welcome to the Prince of Investing Investment here live on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Prince Dykes, coming all the way live from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via the also beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. So we're going to jump straight into it. So if you're following the media, and if you don't know, if you've been following the media, you know, dominating the headlines right now has been President Biden's infrastructure plan, or known as the American Jobs Plan, Jobs Plan, Made in America Plan, so many other plans, infrastructure bill, whatever the case may be. So as we know, President Biden a few weeks ago, well, last month, he announced in Pennsylvania that he wanted to, he announced his whole idea of the infrastructure plan. He wants to build an infrastructure that um, builds new railroads, invest in the green energy, do all sorts of great things to bring us up to speed and to make us competitive globally. Do I agree with, do we need to upgrade our infrastructure? Yes, because I remember I spent a lot of time in Japan and in foreign countries, and it felt like they had some things that we should have had a long time ago, being the, mo the world's most powerful and the world's most wealthiest country. So I do agree that we can use infrastructure. Infrastructure will put people to work and will create jobs, hence to why he's naming it the jobs plan. But as we know, in America, that not in America, but in the world and life, there's no such thing as a free meal. So we're going to, in this episode, we're going to talk about President Biden's plan. We're going to talk about how he plans to pay for it, the, the pros and the cons of that. And then we're going to talk about Jane Yellen. Jane Yellen, she is calling for a global tax. Why is she calling for a global tax? Who will be the real, real winners and losers in the global tax? And then we're going to get into my overall thought process of this whole thing. If we do a global tax mixed with President Biden's plan. First, let's get into President Biden's plan. He announced his plan as part of, this was part of his campaign. It's called the Made in America plan. And what President's Made in America plan, what his plan is to do is to invest in the green energy. How he's going to invest in the green energy? He's going to give tax breaks to people who incentivize going green. For prime example, let's say if I were to get solar panels on my house, uh, let's say the solar panels cost $20,000. When, when I go to file my taxes, I can probably claim $7,000 and get a $7,000 return, bringing down my overall cost of solar panels down to $13,000. So tax credits is, a, is a, a monetary way, is a physical policy way that the government intervenes and help out with the jobs plan, right? This is what President Biden is pushing for. He announced this, hey, I want to go out. I want to help America. I want to get us back to work. All those other great things. Sound great. Hey, some of the things he named in there, he said he wants to eliminate companies from going overseas. He wants to bring jobs back to America. He wants to uh, invest into electronic vehicles. He wants to invest into uh, green energy, railroads, um, railroads, roads itself, all sorts of things. Sounds great, right? But what is the hook? How much is this going to cost us? They're estimating, you've seen most reports say around $2 trillion to $3 trillion, $2 trillion, $3 trillion, right off of the heels of a $3 trillion plan that we just passed about a, a month or two ago, where most Americans received, not most, but many Americans received the $1,400 stimulus check. So we just had this huge um, stimulus check that got passed, and now you're looking at President Biden coming through and he's saying, hey, you know what, now I want to get forward my infrastructure plan. I want to push for this. First question, sounds great, President Biden, but where's the money coming from? We're already, America is already trillions of dollars of debt. How are we going to pay for it? How does he want to pay for it, ladies and gentlemen? Corporate taxes. So let's go back to President Trump. When President Trump was elected, he was uh, sworn in office in 2017. One of the first things that he did, he said, was um, he lowered corporate taxes. Corporate taxes was 35%. He lowered corporate taxes down to 21%. And then from 2017 to 2021, most investors have been pretty happy because when you lower taxes, that's money that automatically go to corporations. You know, it's just if somebody came in here and said, hey, you know what? You was going to pay $5 in taxes. You only have to give me $1. That put more money into corporations and hopes that corporations would hire more people, grow, all these other things like that. That was very good for investors. Investors benefited big time from President Trump's, not what well, corporations and investors benefited big time from President Trump's tax cut. From 35% all the way down to 21%, man, a 14% cut? Great. Now, what does this money do? This money, this ends up on a company's balance sheet. 
it ends up on a company's income statement because the less money you pay in taxes, the more money you get to put in your pocket. The more money you got into your pocket, the more investors are attracted to your company because we see your revenue is growing, right? Now, we come to President Biden. President Biden says, hey, corporations, we got people like Amazon who's paying zero. We got corporations going overseas. We got, um, for prime example, many Nike products are made overseas. So companies are being made overseas and they sell the products over here. They're making huge profits. They're making money and they're not paying their fair share. So, hey, if I can raise taxes, that's what President Biden says in my best President Biden voice. If I can raise taxes by 7%, he wants to raise it from 21% to 28%, which is 7%. I want to raise up to 28%. And if you allow me to raise corporate taxes up to 28%, guess what? I'll pay for this. I'll pay for this whole infrastructure plan in 15 years. So all this is, is a small investment. So now when I look at this, sounds great, but guess what? Everything comes with the cost. Now he's saying that, hey, I want to pay for this with corporate taxes. Let's look at the pros and cons of raising that 7% in corporate taxes. When you raise corporate tax taxes domestically here in America, that incentivizes companies to go overseas. That incentivizes companies to find ways to find new tax havens to go overseas, to take their jobs overseas and things like that. Now, the, uh, that's the cons of it. Now, the pros of raising corporate taxes, the only pro that I see is that, hey, yes, we can fund what we want to do. That's a good thing. Uh, maybe it may help put some government contracts because that's where the money's probably going to go. The government's going to take it. It's going to issue contracts and companies are going to bid for those contracts, things like that. That's the, the pros. You know, everybody wants to live in a, I want a new paved road. I want to, I would love a new paved driveway. I would love a new paved, nothing's wrong with my driveway now, but hey, you get a new one, that's nothing wrong with that. We will all want that, right? But we have to weigh out just like anything with life. What are the pros? What are the cons? How much is this really going to cost us? So when we look at what he's saying, he's saying that, hey, um, when you look at the pros and the cons, that's pretty much the pros and cons I can think of immediately. Now, later on in the show, I'm going to go deeper into some of the pros and the cons of that. So President Biden is saying, hey, if you allow me to raise corporate taxes by 7%, they were 35% before, we lowered it all the way down to 21%, and we can raise it up by 7%, I will pay for this entire bill within 15 years if we have companies paying their fair share of corporate taxes. And we close these loopholes. Also, he wants to close loopholes. He wants to uh, incentivize people for keeping their companies here. I do agree with that. I do agree with incentivizing companies that stay here in America because many companies, what they do is, you know, many times you may call for, uh, many people may call a help desk and help desk is to be way over in the Middle East or way over uh, China or wherever the case may be, or maybe India, nothing's wrong with those countries, but those are jobs that are not in America. And the pros of this is when companies go overseas, Usually it allows us to get cheap products, right? If it would be a great idea if Apple made the iPhone in Texas. It would be a great idea if Nike made the shoes in Colorado. It would be a great idea if so many, the list just goes on how many people get their things, if Tesla made all their cars in Texas. That would be a great idea, right? But how would it affect the consumer? One, Americans, I'm American myself for 36 years. But a lot of us, we like to make a lot of money and do the less work as possible. That's just the human way, definitely the American way. Meaning, we don't really want to work 40 hours a week. We only want to work 40 hours a week at a max. And that 40 hours better include four or five breaks, and it better include a lunch, and we wanted to include a paid vacation, and we want healthcare, dental, all these other great things. And we want great, pristine working environments that are totally safe. That's what we want as Americans. Those things are very expensive. So we have a very high demand but we have a very low input when it comes to corporations wanting to stay with us. In return, since most American workers compared to the rest of the world, we're prima donna workers, that price tag is usually passed to the consumer. Could you imagine an iPhone costing $5,000 or a pair of Nike shoes costing $800? I know some are out there. I'm just talking about in general. We don't want to pay those prices. Americans, we want great jobs. We want low working hours, high pay, but we also want cheap prices as well. That's how greedy we are, right? But everything comes with a cost, like I said earlier. Now, the thing what President Biden is doing now is he's saying, hey, I want to incentivize people who stay here. If you stay here, maybe he can give a tax break to companies that stay here in America. 
Now, with that being said, here comes Jane Yellen. Why you guys and girls tune in today? She comes in. She says uh, she's the Secretary of Treasury. Uh, Janet Yellen. She was the uh, she's the Secretary of Treasury now. She was the Fed Chair under President Obama, uh, but now she's the Secretary of Treasury under President Biden. She uh, now wants to push for a global tax. Why does she want to put push for a global tax? She's saying, hey, how about instead of America charging 21% and Ireland charging 3% and China's charging 50% and this country charging this percent, how about we all get on the same page? Because if we don't get on the same page, what's this going to happen? We're starting a race to the bottom. So for prime example, America lowers this taxes to 21. China lowers this taxes to 18. Then Ireland lowers this taxes to uh, 15%. Then I lower my taxes to 14%. So she says, so race to the bottom. Everybody is lowering, lowering their taxes, which could be bad for the government because how does the government make money? Taxes. And the more we lower taxes, the less money the government spends. Now, I do agree with her on that. I can understand an analogy that people could be starting to race to the bottom, creating a deficiency in uh, the money. But this, we got to look at America right now. America, we are not great stewards of money. When you look at it, you know, we have how many trillions of dollars of debt and we just print, turn the printer back on that I don't see anybody talking about paying off that debt or paying back. We all got social security numbers. The money is taxed to us anyway. So that's why most people don't like paying taxes because we feel as though our tax dollars are being wasted, wasted, which, you know, that's to, to each his own, right? Nobody wants to pay more taxes. Everybody wants to keep as much money as possible. They want to defer and keep as much money as possible, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a uh, quick break here. And with this quick break, and we're going to come back. We're going to finish speaking about what Jan Yellen said. And then I'm going to give you my take on exactly how that affects investors, how that could potentially affect corporations and stocks. And as investors, that's all we really want to care about. What does this mean for me? With them. What does this, what's in it for me? How does this affect us? So y'all stay right here. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back here on the Prince of Investment with Prince Dykes. Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen, she says, hey, we need a global tax. Why do you think she wants a global tax? Because she already knows if we hike up taxes, corporations are going to run to other countries. Common sense. You know, corporations, what they do is called profit shifting. Um, that's a, corp, a cool word for a corporation where they claim their profits in the lower tax paying companies. For prime example, we all heard of companies going off and going to Ireland and the Cayman Islands and Ireland, all of the good stuff like that, right? So Janet Yellen says, we need a global tax to stop people from running to other countries to lower their taxes. Because what countries do, Amazon or whoever, Nike, not saying they're doing this in particular, but at the how the practice is set up is that, hey, America, it's a 21% taxes. But in China, let's say if it's a 10% taxes. So when I report my taxes, all my big profits, I say they were made in China, so I only pay 10% versus paying the 21% here in America, right? So Janet Yellen says, hey, you know what? I know what we'll do. How about we create a global tax? Everybody play a flat rate across everywhere so we can stop this race to the bottom. Everybody's trying to lower their taxes so they can stay competitive. So company, because America knows, hey, the, more, the higher we raise our corporate taxes, they're just going to run to other countries. The opposite side, countries know 
the more we lower our taxes, the more attractive we look for companies to come here, especially America. America has the most profitable companies. So countries intentionally lower their taxes so that America, so that American companies can come to their country and claim their profits because they're saying, hey, we can get 10%. Hey, we won't take 21% like America. We'll only take 10%. So in return, America says, let's lower our taxes so we can be competitive. When America lowers its taxes, China may lower their taxes some more. Now, we're not saying this is happening in particular with China, but on a global scale, this is happening. This is why Janet Yellen is coming together and saying, hey, look, how about we all stop this race to the bottom? Let's quit lowering our taxes. How about we just all agree that our taxes are going to be flat across the middle, and when they're flat across the middle, these corporations have nowhere to run, so we all get our fair share. Now, as an American, great idea, because you know you have the most profitable companies, and you know you're profitable companies. As soon as you raise taxes, they're going to go to a country with lower taxes. We know that. But what smaller country in their right mind, what incentive do they have to raise their taxes and agree to a flat tax rate? So let's say if I'm a little small Ireland, and currently my taxes are only 3%, and America loves, American companies love to come to me and use my uh, tax breaks and profit sharing, right? Now, if I agree with America and says, you know what, how about we all charge 21%? Now, if, if I'm charging 21% like everybody else, what do you think the American businesses are going to do? They're going to stay in America. They're not going to come to me anymore. So the question is, what incentive does the smaller countries have to agree upon a global tax? How does that make sense for them? Who would agree upon that? Now, as Americans, it's great. Great idea. Because we get to cut down and eliminate tax havens. Because we know the countries are going to find out. You know, we got very, very smart tax professionals and people who've been doing taxes for 80 years on an international scale. And they're just going to find another way to get around your taxes, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I want you guys and girls to think about. One of the ways that Janet Yellen is trying to say the global tax is a good idea for some reason. But I don't, I'm trying to wonder why would the smaller companies, they're lowering their taxes because they know the big, the big profitable companies are in America. They're lowering their taxes in hopes that America would come to their country. Why would they hike them up to be on the same playing field? Because American companies would just probably stay in America. Makes no sense. So now when we look at that with corporations and taxes, you got to ask yourself, if corporations, when, when taxes are raised on corporations, what do corporations do? They got a few things they're going to do. One, it can lower their revenue. And if it lowers their revenue, money coming in, that's their top, their, their bottom line. It can hurt their bottom line. Their top line can continue to grow. The top line is the overall, the total revenue that's coming in. But the bottom line is at the bottom of the financial sheet after the tax has been taken out. Now, when you look at the bottom line, the bottom line is going to get affected. That's going to get hit the hardest. So country, companies will be making more money but not making more money. Because it's not about how much you make. It's about how much what? Smart. How much you keep. So now that corporations are saying, hey, well, if our bottom line has been affected, what did everybody like to do? They love to find ways to cut expenses. How can you cut expenses? One of the, one of the biggest expenses most corporations have is people. People, human capital is like one of the biggest labor and human capital are the biggest expense majority of companies have. So with that being said, they, they're going to start to eyeball that. Well, how about we, were, we, were, um, we automate some of these jobs? What if we laid off people? What if we hired less people? So they're going to look at the labor force, which can hurt everyday Americans. So, hey, you know what? If we cut down the labor force, we can continue our growth. That could be one thing they'll do. The second thing is they could replace People with robots, automating, and artificial intelligence. Also, you look at it, you see it in Burger King and McDonald's and fast food restaurants. You're seeing the robots coming out saying, hey, we'll flip those burgers and we'll never complain about our hourly wage. <laughs> right? And we won't, we won't cost you money over the long run. And we'll work all day and all night. So the thing about it is now you're looking at companies are getting into kiosks and robots to do more with less people. So, yes, we almost like the concept of raising minimum wage. Hey, corporations pay your taxes. Okay, 
they may start to target human capital and you can see robots starting to replace humans as labor as labor becomes a uh, a soaring eye oh, not a soaring eye that's the wrong kind of concept there but something that corporations will start to put their eye on now the next thing that people will do that Americans don't like we love that dollar menu we love the dollar this five dollar that or whatever five dollar foot long or whatever the case may be and that's meaning the corporations can raise their prices to accommodate for the higher tax prices but what American wants taxes I mean not higher taxes but higher prices we don't want higher prices so corporations how would they take care of this if they can't hide beer moving around the taxes they may look at raising their prices they may look at cutting their workforce you know cutting or hiring less people so at the end of the day then as investors if companies are making less and less money or if their top line is not growing and their bottom line is not growing if they're not making more and more money that may hurt the potential stock price of the company that means the company may not go up that's why we care about corporate taxes right so my thing is i think that america in general when it comes down to money is physically irresponsible meaning that if we raise the taxes if somebody gave America right now $10 trillion, I don't think we would even use it to pay off taxes. I think we'll use it to go buy something else. Imagine if you had your 16 year old, uh, I don't know, let's say if you got a daughter and she's 25 years old and she comes to you and she says, Hey, I owe $20,000 in debt, it's killing me. Can you help me or whatever? You give her the money and she takes the money. You give her $10,000 to put on her debt. She takes the $10,000 and she goes and buys more stuff. What are you going to do the next time around? Are you going to do you want to give her more money and try to help her get out of debt? Probably not. And that's how America looks. That's why corporation businesses and entrepreneurs don't like it. Here's the biggest con to this. What is happening in the economy right now, ladies and gentlemen? March, we started a pandemic. Companies are just starting to try to peek their head outside to come out of the pandemic. What does that mean for companies? Now you're gonna raise my taxes? It could kill, literally kill small businesses at an improper time like this. Some small businesses are just opening back up their door. They've just found out a way to live in a pandemic or survive the pandemic. And now soon as soon as things are starting to brighten up as the vaccinations and we get to come back outside and things, we kind of get adjusted to the new normal. Now you wanna hit me with a tax hike to build new roads? That could be a very bad thing for small businesses. And everybody knows small businesses is the cornerstone of an economy. So that could be very detrimental for companies that are looking to finally get their push back outside. So those are things I want to talk about. Could be detrimental for small business due to the time of coming out of the pandemic. Um, also, it could hurt the labor force and it could hurt prices. Secondly, uh, why would a small company agree to raise their taxes to be on par with America. No, they benefit from profit sharing. We lose when companies profit share. Small companies benefit. That's why they lower their price, prices. So anyway, that's going to conclude today's episode. I hope you guys and girls took something out of it. Let's do a quick uh, recap. We talked about President Biden's infrastructure plan or his Made in America plan or jobs plan. And we talked about how much it's going to cost. And then to pay for this, he wants to raise corporate taxes by 7% over the next uh, 15 years, and it will pay for it. Uh, that's the first thing he talked about. And in return, the Secretary of Treasury, Jan Yellen, Janet Yellen comes out and says, hey, we need the global taxes because they know if we raise taxes, corporations are just going to run overseas. And then President Biden says, hey, we want to give incentives to companies that stay in America and employ Americans, things like that. Now, you turn around and you look at Secretary um, Yellen. She says, hey, if we raise these taxes, People are just going to run to other countries. And to combat that, how about we get a global tax so we can stop this race to the bottom? Right now, you're lowering, um, this country's lowering their taxes. I'm lowering my taxes. Everybody's getting lower and lower and lower and putting governments, uh, which become becoming physical and responsible, and putting governments in a bad position because they're not making enough money through their taxes. So the government comes through and it says, hey, what if we all agree? It sounds great from an American, but it sounds horrible a country like a Cayman Islands or Ireland or whoever the case who has the lowest taxes that everybody runs runs to so I don't know what incentive do they have to raise their taxes to compete with America then America is not going to use them anymore or potentially not or they could run away businesses from their country 
So it sounds good in theory for America, but it sounds crazy on a global scale, in my opinion. Now, the other thing about it, the bad thing about this is this could hurt the labor force, and it also could hurt prices. Companies may raise their prices, and they may lower or lay off the employment, their workforce. The other thing is timing. When you look at the timing of right now, we just come out of a pandemic. Countries are just starting to beat themselves back up, and now you want to spike height. Uh, spike taxes on small companies that could potentially go out of business. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you guys and girls took something from that. You guys and girls, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Check us out on thinktechhawaii.com. Check us out on iTunes, YouTube, all social media platforms. Hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And also, don't you forget, check out your Wesley Learns book club, available everywhere around the globe. Until the next video podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.